Everything that's happening to you is God is processing. Every difficult moment you're having, he just processes it. If you want to be successful and you want to be happy, those are the two things that's common to most, most people. You're looking at a person who was neither one of those for a long period in my life, man. It's a lot of, a lot of pain in my life. No more than nobody else. I just had a lot. But I learned along the way, everything that's happening to you is God is processing. Every difficult moment you're having, he just processes it. That's all he's doing. Everything you're going through is preparing you for what you ask God for. And if you need to be tough when you get to where you're going, then he's going to toughen you. If you got to be more caring along the way, he going to let you have some trials come your way that's going to have to produce that in you. What happened in my life was getting where I've gotten to today and where I'm even headed to, I had to be tough. So he toughened me along the way. I had to learn how to appreciate a lot. So he took everything. To really understand the value of money, I had none. To just appreciate simple things, what I'm going to eat today, where I'm going to wash up at, where I'm going to bathe. He sent me through a trial of being homeless for three years. I lived in a car for three years. All of that that I was going through, that I was tripping with, that I did not appreciate or understand, I understand it now because I'm on the other side of them troubles. And I understand what all them troubles was for. And even though I did not understand or appreciate the route he took me on, it was the route I had to go on. See, the route you on right now is the route you got to take. And it's very uniquely yours. This thing you're going through, this just uniquely yours. You just got to understand you ain't the only one. You ain't the only one going through it. Now, in the order that it's going to happen, it's just yours. See, God made us very different. This is a, this God we got. God is amazing. He created you so individually. Do you know that it's close to 8 billion people on earth now? Do you know that it's almost 8 billion people on the earth? Do you know how many billions of people have died? Do you know that if you dig up all them people that have died and all the people that are presently here, and every last one of them that he gonna make in the future, not one of you have the same fingerprint. Who do that? Who could possibly be so precise in his infinite wisdom that he created you so uniquely that ain't no two people got the same fingerprint? That's crazy, man. That's real crazy. Eight billion people, you can't duplicate it. The billions that done died, you can't duplicate it. And the ones that's coming will not duplicate it. God a bad boy, man. He's a bad boy. He's a bad dude, man. The first thing I believe you got to do to turn yourself around is really take control of your mind. Or specifically, you got to feed and strengthen the mind. The mind is an interesting place, isn't it? I mean, fear can take us over. Uncertainty kind of unleashes all these thoughts that make us start to believe very often that things will always be bad, that we'll never be able to turn it around, or that we don't have the capability. It's just the nature of those inner voices that everybody feels at times. Now, maybe you're not feeling it right now, but I'm sure there are times that you have. So to take control of your focus, what do you do? Well, I realized that somehow to take control of my mind, I had to feed it. That if I didn't feed my mind, I'd... You know, I'd be living on the weeds that came around me. One of my first teachers, Jim Rohn, taught me something years ago. He said, Tony, every day you've got to stand guard at the door of your mind. My fastest way of combating that when I was first brand new, you know, just trying to figure out what to do with my life, was to read. And I was poor. I was literally sleeping in my car. So I'm ancient enough to remember when there wasn't an internet and when I would go to the library. And I would go to that library and my whole goal was feed the mind feed the mind for at least an hour minimum a day and sometimes more than that where I would read somebody's biography I'd read the story of somebody who went through some unbelievably difficult time and how they turned it around and it gave me perspective or I'd read a book like As a Man Thinketh if 
you haven't read it, it's worth reading again and again. You can read the book in about 20 minutes. Or I'd read Man's Search for Meaning. So reading, listening, feeding your mind is the first step to get out of that place of uncertainty and start to retap into your real ability to thrive in any environment. What's the second key? Well, number two is you got to feed and strengthen your body. As simple as that sounds, if you've been around any of my work at all, you know I believe physiology first. Sometimes even try to feed your mind. You can feed it, but those thoughts keep coming back. What's going to change that mind faster than anything else? It's a radical change in your body, a radical shift in your physiology. How do you do it? Well, think about this. When times are really uncertain, fear creeps in. What is fear? Fear is something quite physical. It takes a hold of you when it's really there and intense. We've all had that gut level fear, that dark night of the soul at times where it feels like, you know, nothing's going to work. So how do you turn it around? Yeah, you feed your mind, but you also strengthen that body. When was the last time you really pushed yourself? You went on a run, a slight jog or a walk, but at the end, you pushed yourself for that last two minutes, five minutes, whatever it was, till you felt like your heart was pumping up, like going to spit out blood, where there was an intensity in you. What's the third key? Well, that third step is you got to get a role model that inspires you and really shows you the way. One of the biggest things that'll change you once you're mentally and physically strong is you need to believe. You need not just have a sense of certainty, but you got to believe that there is a pathway to get to where you want to be. Whatever it is you want to change, whether it be your body, your mind, your emotions, your finances, your relationship, you need a role model. And the fourth key now is you've got to get a proven plan and you got to take massive action. Don't even worry about a proven plan. There are lots of role models. Hopefully they'll prove it to you, but get a plan. Do something. I, I tell people all the time, you just you got to remember the power of massive action. So often in life, people don't begin the journey because they're not quite sure what to do or how to do it right or how to do it perfect. If you want to change your body, get yourself moving. Don't wait for the perfect trainer. Just go out there and move. Put on your shoes and move and get momentum. Just remember, progress equals happiness. If you can start to make progress, if you can get yourself going, even if it's not perfect, if it doesn't work, you know what to do. Just change your approach. If that doesn't work, change your approach. But if there's anything that will shift your life, that will get you to thrive in a difficult situation, is take some massive action. Try something else. Change it, try it, move it. Number five, I think, is the most important of all. So just to remind you, first thing you got to do is feed and strengthen that mind. Read, listen, feed the mind, take control of that focus, stand guard of what other people are saying, focus on what it is you're here to give, what you can control, what you can make happen. Number two, feed and strengthen that body. Remember, fear, uncertainty, they're physical experiences. So the best way to deal with something physical is get physical. Change that body, go lift some weights, go for that run, do something that's going to get you in that state. If you've been to our seminars, you know exactly what to do. But get that hour of power going, that 15 minutes to thrive, if you're familiar with that, to train your body and mind to be strong again. Number three, make sure you put yourself in that position where you find a role model that's going to inspire you and show you that way. Maybe it's a contrasting role model. You think your life's so tough? Find somebody with tougher who's really turned it around. Or maybe it's just somebody who's really succeeded that you can now see there is a way. There's a way through. There's a way to make this happen, even in the toughest times. There's always a way. Four, Make sure you get yourself into action. Get a plan, take massive action. See the disappointments come? Those are normal. That's part of life. But the question is, how do you handle it? How do you handle the coming winters and the disappointments and the downtimes? Well, you can't get rid of January by tearing it off the calendar. But here's what you can do. You can get stronger, you can get wiser, and you can get better. The winters won't change, but you can. And that's how life changes for you. See, before I understood when it was winter, I used to wish it was summer. I didn't understand. When it was hard, I used to wish it was easy. I didn't know. And then Mr. Shof gave me a part of his very unique philosophy when he said, don't wish it was easier, wish you were better. See, that triggered my whole life change. Don't wish for less problems, wish for more skills. Don't wish for less challenge, wish for more wisdom. That's the key. So that's lesson one, learn how to handle the winters. Here's lesson two, learn how to take advantage of the spring. That's the second one. 
Spring is called opportunity. And spring follows winter. What a great place for it. If you were going to put it somewhere, that'd be the place to put it. Right after winter. See, opportunity always comes. Days follow nights. Isn't that terrific? Opportunity follows difficulty. But here's what you must learn to do. Underline these two words in that key phrase. Take advantage. Underline those two. You must learn to take advantage of the spring. See, just because spring rolls around is no sign you're going to look good come fall. You got to do something with it. In fact, you have to get good at one of two things in life. Planting in the spring or begging in the fall. Or get somebody to do it for you. See, those are about the only alternatives. Now, here's what else you must do. Take advantage of the springs quickly because there's only a few. Just a handful of springs have been handed to each of us. They don't come forever. Life is fairly brief. So you got to read every book you can get your hands on on what to do with your springs while they're here. And take advantage, they soon run out. Life is so short. So whatever you're going to do with your life, you got to get at it. Don't just let the springs pass, pass, pass. Learn how to reap in the fall without complaint. Take full responsibility for what happens to you. It's one of the highest forms of human maturity, accepting full responsibility. And another note, learn to reap in the fall without apology. Without apology if you do well and without complaint if you don't. That's maturity. Now what do you do during the hard times, Les? Here's what you must do. Number one is, you must have faith. Judge not according to appearances. Don't judge your circumstances and the possibilities for your future based upon what you have now and because of what's going on now. No, 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 no. That's not the real reality there. What you're going through, if you're going through some hard times, it has not come to stay, it has come to pass. Now, second thing is, repeat this after me, something you should affirm to yourself every day, no matter how bad it is or how bad it gets, I'm going to make it. So you've got to have faith, you talk to yourself, you say that affirmation. The next step is, you must have patience and engage in consistent action. Patience and engage in consistent action. See, everything does not always happen, ladies and gentlemen, when we want it to happen. It doesn't happen quickly. So in that process, they have something in the Far East called the Chinese bamboo tree. The Chinese bamboo tree, every day it has to be watered and fertilized. It's a very hard nut, nut and, and it takes five years of, of watering and fertilization every day, according to American Geographics, before it breaks through the ground. At any time, if the watering process and the nurturing and the fertilization process is stopped, the Chinese bamboo tree will die in the ground. Now, once it breaks through in that fifth year, then in six weeks it grows 90 feet tall. Now, the question is, does it grow 90 feet in five years or six weeks? The answer is obvious. It takes five years. That's how long it took to grow it, to build that foundation, to nurture it, to water it, to build the reputation, to build the credibility, to learn the market, to learn people, to learn yourself, to learn the system, to learn how to do it, to figure it out. That's why you must have patience and engage in consistent action. We live in a world, ladies and gentlemen, where people want instant gratification. They want it right now, but they're not willing to pay the price.